and welcome to the final webinar of day one marketing showcase online for June. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Ashley Jones and I'm the event director at Marketing Showcase and your average at best host for today's online event. Um, I will be back tomorrow as well. So you've got to put up with me for a couple of mornings. Um, thank you very much for checking in and watching our fourth webinar, as I say, where I'm going to be joined in a minute by Will Roberts, who's the managing director at Webbox. And he's got a brand new presentation tested on nobody. So we are the premiere for this one. Um, and it's 20, yes, 20 must haves for your website in 2022. So Will's going to lay out a framework and some of the foundations for what you need to be including in your website. Um, over the next 12 months. So really looking forward to this presentation. Just before we get underway, I'm going to go through a few bits on Zoom, but I'm just going to let you know, I've actually managed to get Will back tomorrow at 12.30 to answer all your questions on website. So today is going to be full on. There's going to be loads of stuff in here for you to kind of go away and digest. Come back tomorrow at 12.30 with any questions you have about your website, and um, I'll have Will live on hand to, uh, to answer those for you. So in true marketing showcase fashion, I'm just going to go through a few bits to do with Zoom. I'm sorry uh, if I'm teaching you to suck eggs, but um, there's a couple of bits that we like to do. And if this is your first session, you won't know. So if you can load up the chat by pressing the bottom somewhere along the bottom of this screen, there's a little toolbar there. And in the chat, based on today's session, please put in what is your number one challenge with your website at the moment? Is it... Uh, defining the actual website's requirements? Is it your CMS platform that you're using? Uh, is it converting on the website? Design? Anything. What could it be? And if you can let me know what your number one challenge is with your website before diving into Will's presentation by using the chat, that would be good. Okay, so people are using the chat. I can see that it's working. Carla, thank you very much. Nigel, great. They're coming in now. That's brilliant. Um, so you guys know how to use the chat. If you want to get hold of me at any point, I'll be in the chat throughout today's presentation. So separate to the chat, you have a Q&A panel. Now, we're not going to use that this much in this presentation because, of course, we've got a Q&A session with Will tomorrow. But if you load any questions in there, if we have some time at the end, we'll go through them. If not, we can roll them into tomorrow's session. So you have the Q&A panel there if you have any questions. So... That's about it from me and my waffle. There's lots of stuff in the chat there talking about websites. So at this point, let me invite Will to the stage to get underway with his presentation. Hi, everyone. Hey, Will, how are you? Yeah, very good. You okay? Yeah, good, thank you. So a couple of bits that are coming from that question that I sort of chucked at our guests, SEO, lead generation, and actually age and keeping the website current were all things that are common uh, from people watching this. What are your sort of thoughts on that? Do you know, it's, it's a problem with many people have. And as I went down the chat, I saw conversions, conversions, converting, you know, all these kind of things. Do you know what? I hope that some of these 20 must-haves will satisfy that. There are some really good trends which, uh, you know, you can build upon, uh, which will help converting. So hopefully today's session will answer some of these questions for you. Cool. Well, 20, we've got a lot to go through. So less of me, more of you. I'm going to vanish and uh, good luck. That's great. So hopefully everyone can see my screen. Uh, thanks to Ash for um, the warm welcome. And uh, I've got uh, a challenge today, I guess, which is getting through these 20 must-haves in just under half an hour. So can I just apologise in advance? Um, I'm going to go through it very quickly, but you will get a copy of the slide deck afterwards. So um, don't worry too much if you miss something, because I'll share that with you. Um, also, pop your questions in, as Ash said, and we'll uh, come to those. Um, also, I just want to kind of do, put a little caveat in there, which is just the fact that I'm going to be answering uh, or addressing these topics quite broadly. So I appreciate that some of these must-haves might not be relevant to your organisation, but hopefully the majority will be. So without further ado, just a, literally a 30-second intro into me. So um, as, as Ash said, I'm Will. I'm the founder of Webbox. We're a digital agency based in Cardiff and London. Uh, we've been going for over 12 years. I've worked with brands such as Fevertree, the NHS, Airbus, St John Ambulance and DS Smith to uh, define their uh, objectives and to deliver digital projects, whether that's websites or paid ad campaigns. And I genuinely enjoy working with businesses and organizations to help them to um, overcome those challenges and to see tangible results. 
So that's enough about me. Um, let's jump straight into it with a stat. So why does all of this matter? Before we delve into these 20 must-haves, why does all of this matter? Why are we even looking at improving our websites and web experiences? Well, according to the Gartner Foot, uh, Future of Sales 2025 report, by 2025, 80% of B2B sales interactions between suppliers and buyers will occur in digital channels. Wow. Okay, so that is a huge stat, one which I think is going to be easily smashed, to be quite frankly, uh, to be quite frank. So we need to take this stuff serious. If we've got a website already, we need to be looking at how we can improve that further. If you haven't got a website, where have you been? Let's get one in place and, uh, and take you forward, uh, maybe the digital transformation project. So let's dive in. What's the first must have? The first must have that your website must have in 2022 is advanced micro interactions. What are these? Let me just quickly show you what I mean by this. So as you can see, as you scroll through, there's lots of animations and you get led on a journey. Okay, lovely little example there of what happens when you put your mouse over different elements and as you scroll down the page. Now, why are these important? While the general purpose of design is communication, digital design can accomplish a little back and forth, that of interaction and feedback. So these moments in which a user takes an action, such as clicking on a button that causes the page to respond, are generally referred to as micro interactions. And their purpose is to foster a feeling of tactile satisfaction. Now, while page uh, responses like these are nothing new. We predict that in 2022, we will see micro interactions become a lot more macro. So designers will intensify them through extreme animations and page transitions. This could range from sudden zooms to a complete reshuffling of the page layout. Although a less is more approach has been the law of the digital land for ages now, these over the top transitions do come uh, across as kind of um, less, intu um, sorry, less intrusive um, because the user is causing them to happen by scrolling or clicking. The end result is UX that responds to input rather than um, forced upon you. So I love these. I think we're gonna see a lot more of them next year. Okay, number two, brand transparency. Okay, so for example, if you're selling this kind of product, you might use an image like this to actually delve into how the product is built up and what are its features. That's one way um, to give some transparency to maybe a product which you have for sale. Now, good UX is a silent teacher. It shows users where to find menus or buttons without them needing to ask. Navigation, however, is not the only lesson UX has to impart. Recently, we've seen a rise in UX that is centered around demonstrating a brand's ethics, showing the user how exactly products are made or services are delivered. This might include labels highlighting sustainable materials used or even maybe social media pop ups or overlays that express transparent policies around how content is moderated. Brands are beginning to realize that the first thing visitors to their website want these days is not necessarily a call to action button shoved in their faces. Instead, many are consci conscientious and, you, um, and need to have uh, the brand's values shared with them before they'll make any sort of action. Through clear product breakdowns and transparent labeling, the UX of designers this year and next um, are going to be dis uh, are, are demonstrating that an app exists both in the digital sphere and in the real world its services affects. Number three, live collaboration. So what do I mean by that? Let me just show you a quick example. So you can see here how multiple users might get involved in collaborating online. And I'm sure you've been doing a lot of this throughout lockdown. Okay, so when it seemed like work couldn't get any more digital, a pandemic made work from home a global standard. As a result, it's no surprise that there's been an increase in online collaboration tools and features. And we expect this trend to continue next year and just to grow from there. 
Examples of these kind of features include live viewing, editing, commenting, messaging, and tagging. Um, ultimately, putting all these kind of things um, digital and, and hosted, and it will see then the death of local files. Now, um, UI designers, for their part, are representing these um, simultaneous users through vibrant color coding, creative cursor designs, and snazzy avatars. While collaborative apps are common enough in the tech field, we're also seeing them extend to other industries. So for example, if you are buying a kitchen, so if you're a you know, kitchen company, um, for your website to have the ability for someone to create that kitchen online and to drag elements and cupboards around on screen to build their kitchen uh, would be one example how you can get live collaboration into your website um, next year. Number four, everyone's heard of this, I'm sure, augmented reality, and one which is a massively growing trend. Let me just show you a quick example of what I mean. So this is a um, online bike shop for you to purchase bikes, and they've brought um, AR into their buying process. I absolutely love that example. Um, so <laughs> obviously AR uh, has existed for a very long time, um, but obviously the evolution of smartphone camera has firmly launched it into mainstream. So up until now, it's been largely um, dismissed, I guess, as kind of gimmicky tech. Um, but the most common iteration of which we encounter in Snapchat and Instagram self, uh, selfie filters. But AR apps are expanding to become more practical and commonplace. So we're seeing AR applied to everything from property rentals to museum tours um, or even a nature walk. Um, so this rising popularity will lead UX designers to follow on, um, sorry, to focus on interfaces that can be easily adapted to a camera overlay. So again, if this relates to you, for example, if you're an organization that maybe has a museum or, or kind of nature walks or those kind of things, then you might well be looking at in, uh, incorporating AR into your website. Number five, mobile first design. So it's really clear that um, mobile design is more important than desktop because sti um, sorry, statistically over 60% of all internet users uh, will access a website via their mobile device. Um, so mobile phone users make up the largest group of um, all the different uh, device types. Needless to say, thumb-friendly mobile design is now simply essential. So your website needs to be intuitive and easy to navigate with the thumb alone. And ultimately, simplicity is the key. It's also worth uh, noting that Google indexes websites based on their mobile um, kind of websites, not their desktop. Uh, websites. They call that mobile first indexing. So that's something to bear in mind as well. And also just to consider the fact that your website needs to have a very quick loading speed um, so that it can be, sorry, can be accessed on mobile devices with um, a 3G connection, for example. Number six, something which has been uh, in the news a lot this year um, is cookie based tracking and how it's changing, okay? So at the moment, uh, cookies would be uh, left on a user's computer, a little small file is left there for tracking purposes, and that's gonna be massively changing. Um, it, it's already starting to change, but next year it's gonna really hit. And we need to move to server-side um, cookie-based tracking, okay? So ultimately, this is something which if you haven't had a conversation with your current web developer about, I would just encourage you to talk to them about it and just say, look, what's all this kind of um, cookie tracking about? And they'll give you the, the lowdown. Um, ultimately, in a nutshell, to overca overcome this change, you will need to implement server-side cookie tracking. So um, speak to your technical point of contact about that. But that is something which is going to be really big next year and you'll need to be prepared for it. <clears throat> Number seven, motion UI design. Let me just quickly show you an example of what I mean by this. So here's a little graphic to show that. <clears throat> so this is a button and when you click it, it gives you a loading bar for when the file is downloaded and then the button changes to open. That little animation is what we call motion UI design. 
Now, ultimately, we really encourage you next year to make a lot more use of Motion UI design to boost page interactivity. So when people see uh, some feedback from your design on your website, they will more likely um, click again and make other actions. And ultimately, some of these buttons then might also be a call to action and you want people to interact with your business. So this massively aids user experience because the user gets to see what they should click on and what's happening after they've clicked a button. Number eight, dynamic content. So let me show you a little example here. So you can see user A on the left-hand side would see one version of a web page, and then user B on the other side would see a completely different version of that page, different content, different uh, imagery, potentially, even maybe potentially different layout. So let's have a look at dynamic content. So as consumers, we want uh, information that is relevant to us and presented in the most convenient and concise way. Websites that display dynamic content have the highest engagement and conversion rates. But what exactly is dynamic content? This is where information, data or visuals that are shown to users based on their geolocation um, or specific behavior and interests. So for example, if I browse a particular website while I'm in London and then travel to New York, the content I see could be different, even though I'm looking at the same page. Now, this technology could also be used with A-B split testing. If you're looking to split test how your uh, different versions of a page um, you know, responds to users. And just a quick top tip to leave you with, if you're looking to implement something like this, we'd really recommend a tool called Personize. Uh, so personalize ends Y Z E uh, to assist you with implementing this on your website. Okay, next thing, number nine, page speed. This is so important, okay, and a really, really big um, kind of ranking factor at the moment. So I'm not going to surprise anyone by saying that a slow website is the worst enemy of your online business, okay? It is really, really important. Um, so previously, we could probably get away with a website that loads in five seconds or less. Now you just need to try even harder. Your website needs to load, we recommend, within two seconds at absolute most, um, even on slow uh, internet connections. So it's time to ramp up those servers, optimize your code, simplify your design, and make sure that your website uh, loads quickly. Quick top tip, run your website through Google's PageSpeed tool, uh, and it will give you an instant rating as to your website page speed. Number 10, halfway there, um, accessibility. So uh, let me just show you a quick graphic. So this could be an accessibility options menu, which appears when you click on an accessibility icon on your website. This allows people to uh, change text colors, background colors, um, font sizes, etc. for those that might be um, visually or hearing impaired. Um, now it's the 21st century. Um, currently it's the 21st year of the 21st century as well. And it's only logical as, highly, uh, as a highly developed society that we're talking and taking uh, various disabilities really serious and make it effortless for disabled people to access information on the web. This stuff shouldn't be a nice to have. This should be absolute basics of any website. So your website needs to focus on accessibility and availability functions, as well as comprehensive design that caters for almost anyone. Just to put in a little caveat here, this is not just for public sector organizations that are trying to meet the WCAG 2.1 AA level compliance requirements. Okay, this is for everyone. So we need to take accessibility serious. Number 11, dark mode. Okay, so this is really cool. I'm sure you've seen it on um, maybe your mobile device already. They're kind of normally inbuilt now to have a dark mode. Um, but the reality is most people um, are wanting that across different uh, devices and web applications now, not just their phone, maybe an Apple or Android phone. So we're actually seeing dark mode come into websites now. And there's a little toggle normally where you can toggle dark mode on and off. Um, it looks super sleek, um, but it can have other advantages. So for example, it can save battery life if people are viewing websites on a mobile. Um, and actually PhoneBuff found that it can extend the life of an iPhone battery by up to 30%. 
So it can have uh, really good benefits, but there are also other benefits, which I won't go into now because of time, um, but dark mode is a feature which we'd encourage you to put on your website uh, next year. Okay, number 12, have a clear message, okay? Now this sounds really obvious, but you know, have you ever wondered what you really need on your homepage? Well, actually it's a great copywriter, okay? We are um, an ultra consumer society and we don't have time for stuff we don't need or care about. So what your unique selling point is, your mission and values, uh, they need to be presented in one simple but very powerful message. And it must be the first thing a visitor sees on your website. So set out a really good one liner on your website so that people understand what you do and what you offer very quickly. This is more important now than ever because people just don't have the time. Number 13, call to actions. Okay, so, um, you know, lots of websites have them, but, you know, believe you me, there's a lot of websites that don't as well. Okay, so good design will naturally draw the user's attention to your call to actions. So first and foremost, your website needs to have a really good design and a well thought out plan for where these call to actions are going to be placed. We'd also encourage you to incorporate multiple call to action types. So you might have some forms, uh, a newsletter sign up, maybe a download of an ebook, uh, phone us, contact us, you know, have a range so that as many users as possible will eventually convert. And then a quick top tip, if you've got a sticky navigation which sticks to the top of the screen as you scroll down your website, you might want to actually use that to include a call to action within it so that when people scroll down the website, they can always see a call to action. Number 14, chatbots. Okay, so th this is again, not something necessarily new, but something we think is going to explode uh, the, the rest of this year and into 2022. So they've been around for some time, but here's the thing which is gonna change. It needs to be a lot more human, okay? So I think the myth at the moment is that they're very robotic uh, and you never get the answer that you want, but that is changing, okay? And next year, we're gonna see lots of new releases of different chatbot tools, which are gonna be a lot more kind of friendly and human, and this will allow people to engage with them more effectively. So it's worth uh, considering the use of a chatbot on your website. But here's a key, you must test it and then kind of look at the results and then pivot and then repeat that. Test something else, look at the results and pivot. This is something which needs to constantly evolve from the data that you're, uh, that you're gathering. Okay, number 15, this is a really exciting one. This is something which most people don't do. Uh, so um, listen up, this is something which I really recommend that you put on your website next year progressive lead forms. What do I mean by that? So you hit a website and it comes up with a form and it just asks maybe for some basic details, first name and email address, because we know people aren't gonna sit there and give us their information for ages. But upon collecting that, we might wait for them to come back to the website for a second visit before we gather more. And on the second visit, that form might automatically recognize that user and change the form to then ask for different pieces of information because we already know their name and email address. This is a great way to populate your CRM, but in a phased approach so that you're not just gathering information in one hit, okay? So really encourage you to have a look at progressive lead forms. They're a fantastic way at gathering more information over a longer period of time. You could also look at something called type form, which is another way to break forms down into baby steps because, um, because ultimately people won't hang around and complete a long form that you put in front of them. Okay, number 16, this is one of my favorites, I'll be honest, okay, varying UX. So let me just show you an example, okay? So here's um, uh, a little video of when I looked at the uh, Apple website. Um, and you can see that uh, there's a particular animation going on, which shows um, the, uh, I think it's the, the iPhone Pro uh, in this instance, okay? Now, um, Apple are tracking how I interact with that website. They're kind of, uh, they're using analytics tools in the backgrounds to see everything from, you know, basic analytics all the way through to how quickly I scroll. And they realized that I scrolled really quickly. So I went to the same page anonymously Okay, so um, uh, kind of in incognito mode, and I saw the same page, but a different animation. So watch this. So I see a longer version 
of that animation and it slides the whole phone up. Now that takes a few seconds longer, but what Apple have done is they've made the decision to, uh, on my second visit, show me a different animation, which is, um, which is quicker, uh, less time, because they know that I'm not gonna hang around. Okay, so they've detected the fact that I scroll very quickly up and down pages, and I haven't got time to watch their animation, which is gonna be you know, potentially 15 seconds or so. Now, the important thing to know here is not all users are the same. Some people will sit there for ages and they'll want that whole experience. They'll want to see the animation and they'll get drawn right into it. Others might know what they're looking for and they'll be scrolling up and down pages very quickly. And your website needs to have the ability to vary the user experience depending on that user. So really important point, I love this and would really encourage you to look at varying the UX on your website next year. Number 17, voice activated interfaces. Okay, so the way that we access information is changing. Instead of typing into Google, we now ask a question or make it a demand. Okay, um, so this means web design is adjusting as well to keep up with the prevalence of voice chatbots and virtual assistants. While a voice activated interface isn't commonplace for, for most websites, this emerging trend isn't going anywhere for the foreseeable future. So we can expect to see more and more websites integrating voice search as an option to traditional search in 2022. So definitely keep this on your agenda because I think this is going to explode next year. Nearly there now, folks. 18 out of 20. So we're on to storytelling. OK, so I'm not going to play uh, this video. I'll, I'll skip it. I'll give it to you in the slide deck afterwards. But this is actually a video of how Webbox introduces ourselves um, on, on our own website. And it just gives you a story as our background and our values and our culture so that people can see a lot more about us in a very short video um, rather than having to trawl through lots of text. Now, this technique of storytelling is one which we need to get into more because people care more about our values and who we are as people than we are about our corporate status, um, our, our corporate statements, uh, generally speaking. So I'll skip past that. Um, you can watch it another time, but just because of time, I'll, I'll move on. OK, so storytelling is really important. And for that authenticity to come through is something which we need to really focus on next year. OK, number 19, our landing pages. OK, so landing pages are obviously a must have. OK, you need to have them. Um, these are kind of destination pages for each motivated visitor uh, who has clicked to a call to action um, that we want them to have more relevant content and to put a particular message or offer in front of them. Um, and most landing pages will now integrate into a CRM system um, or potentially a marketing automation platform. Uh, that's even better. Um, but it's also important that you're in the driving seat. So ultimately, these uh, landing pages that your website has need to be CMS managed so that you can create them, evolve them, uh, change their layout. Um, so it puts your marketing team in, uh, in control. So really important to have landing pages, but that control of the landing pages on your website. And then finally, make sure that you've got incredible tracking in place so that you can track everything uh, that a user does on the website and you can then test and learn and pivot um, based on the data that you gather. Which leads me nicely on to my final point, which is all about advanced tracking. OK, so this is something which is pivoting massively at the moment. But in 2022, I think it's going to explode into something quite different. So just to touch on it briefly, uh, advanced tracking is really a must for your website, okay? You need to have, um, for example, event and e-commerce tracking if you're using Google Analytics to really get down to the nitty gritty. Now, I'm not talking about just the number of users on your website. I'm talking about who clicked what button, how did they uh, fill out a form? Did they drop off at a particular point? What products did they buy? How much was that sale? You need to know this data because it's the data which will allow you to learn and pivot. The other really good thing is um, let's get some heat maps set up so that you can heat map your website and see how people interact and where they move their mouse. This is a massive thing so that we can actually adjust maybe things like our navigations to be more relevant for our users. And then finally, if you're dealing with slightly bigger volumes, live dashboards are a great way to see this data in a bit more of a real time. So worth looking into there. So 2022 is going to be a big year. Um, 
these 20 must-haves are things which we really think you should include um, on your website. And I hope that for everyone listening today, there's a lot of value from these 20 points. Well, you're a legend. That is 20. I've written, I've got 20 points on my thing that I need to get on with on, <laughs> on my website. So it, it, it's been difficult to put it in half hour, Ash, but it's, it's been, no, uh, honestly, it's honestly, I swear. <laughs> well, look, I, th this is actually, I was working this out another day. That's webinar number 104 for me, organized in the last 12 months. And I swear that was one of the most valuable ones I've ever done. It, it, you, I've got so much stuff to go away with. And I can see people in the chat saying, um, brilliant presentation so I know that was your first time going through that but seriously really good job um, now I'm going to be a bit of a cop out here and there's a few people that have put questions in uh, that maybe might be a bit disappointed but I'm going to use those we don't have enough time to go through them I'm going to use all of those questions to be the first questions of tomorrow's Q&A session Will if that's okay with you yeah, no, that's fine for me. Yeah, absolutely. So there's some really good questions in there. I will, however, um, keep note of the questions. I'll pass them over to Will. So if you can't get involved in tomorrow's session for whatever reason, if you've got another meeting, he will still answer your questions. But we are going to use those to build the start of our Q&A for tomorrow. So make sure that you sign back in tomorrow at 12.30 to hear um, the answers to your questions um, for tomorrow's Q&A. So I just want to launch a quick poll. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. That's wrong. Relaunch. Right, there's a poll uh, put up from the guys at Webbox asking about your challenges, which kind of mirrors what we said at the start. So out of the options on there, let me know what are you struggling with in your current website? And um, well, I'm sure you'll be in touch with those guys to kind of offer advice and, and help in any way you can. So the poll is going to be standing there for, for about a minute or so just as we close this out. So Will, um, yeah, again, Brilliant presentation, back at 12.30 tomorrow, all we've got time for. So I'm just going to say my thanks one more time and leave that poll running in the background. So thanks very much, Will, and thanks for everyone watching. That's great. Thanks, everyone.